بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم وما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فقال عز وجل وأنتم الأعلون إن كنتم مؤمنين رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي So I want to discuss an extremely important topic. The United Nations just gave its verdict. Many Muslims are happy that the courts have sided with the cause of the Muslims being oppressed. Of course, it is a step forward. But it has no practical value. It has no practical value because we all know in the end it's just a discussion point. You're trying to prove what is obvious. Trying to prove the sun exists. Is this is the game we're playing with Israel and, in, and with America and Britain? That we have to prove the sun exists? That we have to prove that oppression exists? Is this the game we're going to play? The reason we play this game is because we're caught up in the narrative of the other. And we are not clear on our own viewpoint, the Islamic viewpoint. We're not clear about it. So then we get caught up on, they, you know, we're so happy they gave a verdict in our favor. And some of us are not happy that they didn't give enough a verdict in our favor. But the reality is that we are still playing within the paradigm of the West. And we're still playing within the paradigm of the modern Western concept, con conceptualization of the world. So let me, before I talk about, there's only one real solution to all of this. But for you to understand the importance of what I'm going to say, let me share with you something first. The only solution is that Muslims, ha and the only way to free Palestine, the only way to free Sham, the only way, the only way, the only way our tradition tells us this in very clear, unambiguous terms. And if anyone knows the blessings and the spiritual state and the spiritual aspect of Al-Aqsa, will understand that this land will only be given to us when the Khilafah is established. That's the only time that this land will be free. The only time that Al-Aqsa will be free is when we is bring about Khilafah to work for Khilafah. That if the rest, if there are some Muslims, they're doing defensive jihad somewhere. مَنْ مَاتَ دُونَ مَالِهِ فَهُوَ شَهِيد The Prophet said, whoever f dies fighting for his wealth, for his property, is shaheed. And so, we have so many shuhada. What should the rest of the Muslims be doing politically? Should they be begging the White House? Let me share with you why it is useless to beg the White House. It should already be clear after the whole Epstein situation that all the politicians are being blackmailed. But if you're still not clear, let's go to World War I. Let's go and understand what brought down the Ottoman Empire. The forces that brought down the Ottoman Empire. Let's understand what we are actually facing. And who can better tell us what we're facing than what our Prophet told us and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. But because that's sometimes not effective. So I have to go back to history and show you the history of how things were, how things happened. So then maybe if I say Khilafah, something will ring in your head. 
many Muslims are have an allergic reaction to the concept of Khilafah, to the idea of Khilafah. But if you study the Prophet and his sayings, this end times is connected to Khilafah. And so, let us now listen to this, please. History is always written by the conqueror, and that's the history that's fed to us. Now let me show you the history of the other side. In the middle of the 19th century, Moses Hess formulated the first written principles of communism. In 1862, Hess, or the communist rabbi as he was called, wrote the book Rome and Jerusalem. Let me share here. How many Muslims understand that the Communist Party was started by Zionists and Jews? This is a historical fact. And the system of communism, the system of communism is very similar to the system that is today in Israel. And it is very similar to the idea of the Great Reset that Schwab's keeps talking about. Those of you who know what I'm saying, know what I'm saying. The, the, the global economic forum that they talk about, the Great Reset, what they're talking about is what was in communism before. That same communism is coming up with a new face now. And what is already in Israel is already a form of communism. When you ever have a caste system in apartheid where there is an elite and people under the elite, that's communism. Just study history. Anyway, we will come to this. Just listen to this first. So this was the first person, the first rabbi that talked about the state of Israel. He was the first. So Zionism and communism. And what will Dijal do? The Dajjal is going to say, this is Jannah, this is heaven, this is hell. And the, the, the heaven of Dajjal is on earth. Because if you study the Jewish understanding of heaven, okay, this becomes clear. He said, this is Jannah. He's giving you Jannah in dunya. And he's saying, this is the hellfire. He's not even waiting for you to die. And he's saying, this is it. That's communism. Okay, I mean, that's socialism, to be more exact. But it's the same communist structure with an elite on top and everybody else on the bottom. And that, and in fact, one of the reasons Hitler was very against the Jewish community was because of the Bolshevik revolution that had taken place in Russia. And what the, the Communist Party, the, the, basically the, the Jewish people in the Communist Party, had done to the Christians of Russia and established atheism in place of the church. Hitler, being a very religious Christian, feared that the Jews in Germany would do the same thing. And if you read his book, he makes this clear. And he talks about uh, many aspects. What, what was the, one of the first things that Hitler did when he conquered all these different countries? What was the first thing that he did? He went and destroyed all the Freemason Mason lodges. You, why do you think the Ottoman Empire had a relationship with Germany? Because the Ottoman Empire had one Khalifa, one Sultan of the Muslims, who was a Sultan of the Muslims for 90 days. I think his name was Murad. He was part of the Freemasons, but then he went crazy, alhamdulillah. And then uh, Sultan Abdul Hamid, the last Khalifa of the Muslims, became the Khalifa. And then after that, you know, he was taken out of position and uh, Ataturk took over. So that's what happened in history. The Freemasons tried to take over the Ottoman Empire. When they couldn't do that, they tried to implode it from within. And Hitler, same thing almost happened with him. They tried to implode him from within and tried to attack him from outside. The same, this is why the Ottoman Empire and Germany were both attacked from the outside by the same forces. And the same forces were attacking from within. 
Now I let's continue. In which he laid the foundations for a Jewish nationalist movement called Zionism. In the book, he called on the Jewish people to become separatists and to prepare for the creation of a future homogenous Jewish ethno state. Palestine would be occupied by the Jewish people, but the big problem was Palestine was at this time 90 to 95 percent Arab. Hess argued that the international Jewish bankers would help in this realization of stealing the land of the Palestinians. Hess suggested in his book that one last race and class struggle would be developed between the Aryans and the Semites. In this fight, Hess predicted that the Jews would stand as winners and the Aryans as losers. The Jews would stand superior over all other peoples. And because Jews had preserved their racial purity over the centuries, it would give them a leading role in the world. Hess essentially promoted eugenics and racial hygiene for the Jews. And the reason Hitler talked about eugenics is because he knew this point that the Jews are raising about purity of your people, your nationalism, your what bonds you as a people is important because he saw that as part of the Jewish success. And so that played into how Hitler himself was thinking. And talked about a future Jewish ethno state. He also referred to Christianity as the religion of death. Fascinatingly, he predicted a future war in Europe, with Germany, Italy, and Austria involved as a part of a race struggle. Moses says was also a close friend and collaborator of the two Jews, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, which he converted to communism and assisted them in their work with the Communist Manifesto in 1948. This proves that socialism, Marxism, communism, and if you read the Communist Manifesto, maybe one day I'll have time to go over it. But if you read the Communist Man Manifesto, you'll see they talk about the Federal Reserve Bank. They talk about breaking up the family system. They talk about control of the world. They talk about how they have control of the world. Netanyahu himself recently said this. We can easily push America in the direction that we want to. So when this is the case in the world that even if the whole world is against them he doesn't care he was asked about this Netanyahu was asked about this what would happen if the whole world is against us he said it doesn't matter as long as we have us and i mean i'm paraphrasing as long as the united states is in our pocket what difference does it make okay so let's watch this first and then i want to make the point with uh Netanyahu if i remember and then i'm going to talk about khilafa that maybe we'll understand why in the end times this is the solution? In fact, share the same roots. Although they travel different paths, they have the same common goal, domination of the world. Both work and plan. So that could be the no hide lands that are put on the world. That could be called the Great Reset. It is an apartheid state, not just on uh, a certain strip or certain people. It's It's to do it globally, and particularly in the more particularly in the Arab world. For the day when the chosen race shall inherit the earth. Karl Marx's real name, Moses Mordecai Levy, was descended from a long line of famous rabbis who were so called Talmudic scholars. Marx's grandfather was a rabbi by the name of Mordecai. In fact, his grandparents were related to the Jewish Rothschild family. Through marriage, Rothschild would also partially fund Karl Marx, who would be remembered as the Jewish father of communism. Le Droit de Vivre, May 12, 1936, stated that Jewry is the mother of Marxism. The Communist Manifesto laid out the ideology of communism. Now, it was in the interest of the Jewish people to promote communism or the ideas of communism. Why? Because they're always a minority. They're small in number. So when you have communism, or when you put in a country the idea of minority and minority rights like they did in the U.S., and the lobbying rights of the, of the, of the minority, this is why so many American, white Americans especially, are very upset. Because they're like, 
Where is our voice? Well, this is our country, and we don't have a voice. And here, these people, they have a voice. And everybody listens to what they say. Nobody cares about what we say. If they say the jobs leave America, jobs leave America. If 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 the majority of the people of America want the jobs to stay in America, no one cares. So the white people really do have a legitimate uh, claim of, to be upset. The problem is that their anger is directed in the wrong way. Their anger should be on the government and the people that are sellouts in the government, not on the minorities themselves. Its key points include a central bank with monopoly and credit. Now remember, this is way back then that they talked about this. And the Federal Reserve Bank still exists today. So when we're talking about control, it, there's, there's no way out of this unless there's a totally new system outside this matrix, outside this money, outside this whole system, because everything's controlled by the federal, res the central banks of each country that are all then connected to the Federal Reserve and, and the institutions like that are connected to that. So the only way out is to create a new system. The only way to create a new system is to establish Khilafah. But to establish Khilafah, you have to know how to establish Khilafah. And to establish Khilafah, you have to know what the, that system is going to look like and how it's different from what we have today. But I digress. Let's continue. Abolition of countries and nationalities. Abolition of the traditional family, consisting of a man, a woman, and children. Abolition of private property. Remember, this was book was talking about this 200 years ago. And it's actually, you can find it online. The Communist Manifesto. It'll, you can find it in an audio book. It's about an hour and a half long. It's not that. It's like the, it has four chapters. Which means no rights for the people to make it impossible for people to earn a livelihood by introducing heavy taxation, confiscation of property, abolition of the right of inheritance, a communist state, a communist monopoly on credit and banking, the media in total control of the communists. Women should not focus on family and children anymore. In their own words, communism wants to do away with the status of women as mere instrument of production abolition of Christianity and morality. Marx refers to this totalitarian scheme as dictatorship of the proletariat, and his cult followers promote violence, class envy, hostility towards free markets, family, business, tradition, and Christianity. Today, they are instrumental in the destabilization of Europe. Marx also openly encouraged genocide against Slavs, referring to them as racial trash and that they must perish in a revolutionary holocaust. In his 1920 article, Zionism versus Bolshevism, a struggle for the soul of the Jewish people, Winston Churchill stated his belief that international Jews were seeking a worldwide communist state under Jewish domination. The international Jews would use communism and Zionism to accomplish this. As a first step to remember where are most Jews from in America and Israel, most Jews are from the for former Soviet Union. This is where Ukraine is. This is where the whole thing is happening. And finally, uh, Christians in Russia are waking up that they were duped and now they're going back to their traditions. And the same thing has to happen with Muslims that with this, the fervor that the Christians of Russia and uh, Greece and this whole area where there was Orthodox Christianity, the way they're going back to their religion, making three churches a day. We need to go back to our Islam with the same fervor because there's no future in, in this scheme of life that's been created by the West. It's meaning, it's meaningless life. It's establishing Israel. Ezekiel Niles described in Niles Weekly Register article that the Rothschilds had purchased Jerusalem in 1829. Rothschild had founded Israel, and Rothschild has always been the backer of Israel. Whatever Rothschild <coughs> wants, he gets. It, it is believed that he is the richest man in the world. And I, I have little doubt of that. In 1897, the first Zionist Congress was held in Basel, Switzerland. 
and was shared by Theodor Herzl. Jewish delegates from across Europe agreed that Palestine should be given to them. Prior to his death in 1904, Herzl predicted that a world body will one day give Palestine to the Jews, and that he will go down in history as the father of the Jewish state. For Herzl's dream to come true, European military powers would have to be manipulated and used into taking Palestine away from the Ottomans by force. In the German newspaper Deutsche Zeitung, Herzl wrote, The wealthy... So now I want you to notice. In order to get Palestine to the Jewish people, what did they have to do? They had to bring down the entire Ottoman Empire. Did they do that? Yes. Is there power of these people more today or less today? More today. So then why are we going to the United Nations? I'm not saying don't go to the United Nations, but I'm saying that you have to understand that the solutions for us in the divine, in the way things work divinely, in the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one's going to do our bidding. And Allah is not going to let anyone else do our bidding. We have to stand on our own feet. We have to do our own work. So while the Muslims who are giving up their lives are giving up their lives, what should the rest of the Muslims be doing? They should be praying. They should become spiritually better. They have to do that one to their neighbors. And they have to organize themselves to reestablish the Khilafah. And they have to organize themselves to make Hijrah outside the cities because these cities are about to collapse. The more Israel is pushed to the corner, the more the whole world again will get into a situation of economic collapse. Now, notice what uh, Theodore wrote in the, um, it was in the daily, I forget what the name of the newspaper was where he wrote this. The wealthy Jews rule the world. Okay. The fate of government lies in their hands. They start wars between countries and when they f wish the governments make peace. When the wealthy Jews sing, the nations and their leaders dance along, just like America's right now. Can you see that? Can you see that? You think you're going to get what you want from the United Nations? Or you're going to have to do the hard work of reestablishment of Khilafah, which is a, ha a tall order. Okay? When the wealthy Jews sing, the nations and their leaders sing along. And meanwhile, the Jews get richer because they have to buy the weapons. Okay? And so, uh, let me see if I still have this here. This is the name, it's called the Daily Express, where he wrote this. Okay? The Jews rule the world. The fate of the governments lies in their hands. They start wars between countries, and when they wish, the governments make peace. When the wealthy Jews sing, the nations and their leaders dance along. And meanwhile, the Jews get richer. So now... All what what's in the center of all of this is the creation of the Federal Reserve. I'm not going to go into that right now. I want to show you something else first. <coughs> so this is what Netanyahu says. Okay. So he's talking about how he's going to causing them to fear everything is about to collapse. That's what he wants to do with the Palestinians. Fear is what brings them to what? To hold on. But again, the world will say, we're the aggressors. Who's saying this? Netanyahu said this. Then he says, They can say what they want. So he was asked, the world will say we're aggressors with what you're saying. The world can say what they want. Aren't you afraid? They'll say, BB is his name. Okay. Especially today with the US, I know how they are. America is something you can easily maneuver and move in the right direction. And even if they say something, then, so then they say something, so what? 80% of Americans support us. It's absurd. Look, I wasn't afraid to maneuver. 
the Clinton administration, and by the way, he considered, Netanyahu considered to be, Clinton, well, he ca called him radically pro-Palestinian. And if you remember the Monica Lewinsky case, it happened because he was siding on the side of the Palestinians. And Monica Lewinsky today lives in Israel. I wasn't afraid to convert, uh, confront uh, Clinton. I was not afraid to confront uh, Oslo or uh, the United Nations. And he says, oh, about the agreements, you know, I'll just look at them from my own perspective. And who's going to argue with me? Watch. I gave my own interpretation interpretation to the agreements. This is what he is. This is this is acting like being the king of the world. I don't have to care about America. I don't care about the world. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And and the Muslims they want to confront this. And with the way the Muslim leaders are, you know, the way the Muslim leaders are, uh, whether it be Salman or the 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 shameful army of Egypt and the shameful Muslim army of Pakistan and the way the Muslim world is and all these dots on the map, little dots called Dubai, UAE, all these little dots that have no meaning, no meaning in the world, zero, they're like filth, okay? Uh, all the, the, the leaders, Muslim leaders don't care, so who's going to put this injection of the idea of Khilafah in the Muslim world? Who's going to bring back the unity of the Muslims? Because no one's going to do it for us. The United Nations is not going to do it. No court of justice is going to do it. America is not going to do it. So if you really want to do something, right, you have to organize the people to deal with the situation it is. First, you have to deal with the collapse that Israel will cause. And second, then you have to organize yourself to reestablish the Khilafah. And if you don't do this, you miss the boat. You don't know where you are. You don't know what you're doing. And you don't know your enemy. You don't know yourself. You don't know your own history. Your own history should tell you that there is no solution other than what we lost. What we lost was a great empire. We need to unite the Muslim lands, unite the Muslim armies, and we need to push the Muslim leadership that, come on, stand up on your feet. Don't fear anyone except for Allah. But everyone's bought out. Everyone's blackmailed. Everyone can be, you know, the Muslim leaders are nincompoops. They're worse than the non-Muslims. Totally worse than the non-Muslims. The non-Muslim leadership of the world has done more for our Palestinian brothers and sisters than the Muslim leadership has done. They only care about keeping their seat. That's all. That's the beginning and the end of their entire analysis of everything. Will I get to keep my seat? And for MBBS, me, MBS, this guy who now has new rules regarding Ramadan, doesn't want the speakers running in Ramadan, doesn't want Muslims to fundraise for Palestine in Ramadan, those people who like completely just trying to destroy Islam from within. And the, and the reality is that, you know, even secular Muslims need to wake up. There is no solution. It's The Democrats are not going to help us. The Republicans are not going to help us. This dual system is not going to help us. This system of duality, ya'juj and ma'juj, Republican and Democrat in every every developed country, this musical chair, the, par, the dictatorship of this two-party dictatorship or this kind of like, this two-party system anywhere in the world that it is, it's, it's not going to be able to do anything for you. It's designed as part of the, the, the Jalik system, you can say. And so, here we are. Are we going to push for Khilafah? Are we going to talk about Khilafah? That we need to finally, if the, if the Jewish people can have their homeland, based upon Jewish identity, in which they are the primary citizens and everyone else is less than them. If they can have a religious state, why can't we as Muslims have a religious state? If 
if we can, if 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 the Jewish people can have Israel and this little Israel and have so much power of the world, imagine if the Muslims came together, and if we came with the mercy of the Prophet that he taught us, and who came with the teachings of Quran, and if we if we came together with our large Muslim population together, really as together, how easy it would be instead of bringing such injustice to the world, we would bring justice to the world. We would show the world what fair play and justice is. Only if, only if. But the reality is that there is, until we don't, we're going to keep getting beaten up in the end of the day. We're going to keep getting beaten up until we wake up. We will punish them with small punishments before the big punishment on the Day of Judgment. Perhaps they'll return back. Perhaps you will return back. Perhaps you will say, no, we need Islam back in its full capacity. And if It's like uh, if there's any part of our sphere of living in which we have not brought godliness and taqwa and the prophetic model into shaitan will take that space if we don't affect politics shaitan will take that space if we don't affect economics shaitan will take that place if we don't affect the masajids in our community in our hearts in our families in our society then shaitan will take that place and so we have to bring back what we have lost and that can only happen by realizing what is the as long as you're in this dunya and you're carrying the mission of the Prophet, the mission of the Prophet was twofold on the external side. Okay, Number one was to do da'wah to the non-Muslims. Uh, I'm talking about external, outside the Muslim Ummah. And number two, to establish the unity of the Muslims via the Khilafah. This is part of our obligations in Fard al-Kafaya that we have to do and have to work on. And more than that, there's no solution outside this for the Muslims. And until Muslims don't bring back Khilafah, and part of Khilafah will come back by our work and our persistence in the Holy Lands. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولي سائر المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته